you're watching this video, most likely you're looking for a new job. Now that could be because of recent layoffs, you could be just getting started in the industry, or you're just looking for what's next in your career and you would like to sharpen your skills to make sure that you can find as many opportunities as possible. And that's what I'm gonna do here in this video. So let's just hop right into it. So there's four things we're gonna talk about initially that are gonna be the things that you absolutely need to do that are really going to raise your chances of finding an opportunity quickly. And after that, I'll cover five other ancillary things that will help you always boost you and your personal brand to make sure that you always have opportunities down the road as well. So let's start with the first one. Number one, what you wanna do is make sure that you have a LinkedIn profile. If you don't, go create one. Inside this LinkedIn profile, you wanna make sure you put your skills, fill out all of your experience, fill it out as best you can. There's tons of videos out there on how to do this if you're not familiar with it, or just go to their website and they'll walk you through it. That's number one. Make sure you have that completely fleshed out before you go to number two, which is next. Number two, what you're going to do in LinkedIn is you're going to go into the settings, into the open to work feature. And in those settings, you'll turn that feature on. And what that does is it updates your avatar and has a little stripe and it says open to work on your avatar. Then it notifies recruiters and anybody else who's out there, maybe HR managers who are looking to hire that you are available to work. At that point, they can kind of hop in, look at your profile and decide if you would be a great fit for some of the opportunities that they have. This is huge huge. You have to do this. This will have people coming into you. So while you're doing your manual outreach, which we'll talk about in a minute, things will be coming in. So you're going to have people coming to you while you're also going out and looking for opportunities as well. Basically getting a two for one deal here on all the opportunities that you could find. So make sure that you turn that on. All right. So number three, now this is where I might lose some of you. You're going to want to directly reach out to recruiters that you know. Now I know recruiters have kind of a bad rap in the industry. Personally, I love them. I see recruiters as my secret weapon to make sure that I always have an opportunity to actually go out into. If for whatever reason, an economic downturn happens, layoffs, something, budget gets cut short. These are all things that happen and we're all susceptible to them in the tech industry. So I like to make sure that I have as many opportunities lined up and recruiters will do that. So you're going to want to reach out to recruiters that you know. Now, the best thing you can do is if you haven't kept track of them, go into your email client and find any type of opportunity that's been in there. Go inside of LinkedIn, look in your LinkedIn in messages, any of the ones you haven't deleted yet, and find those recruiters. If you don't have any recruiters you've reached out to, look online for some local recruiters or recruiters on LinkedIn and contact them directly. What do you want them to know is you're currently looking for work. Here is your skill set. Here are the things that you can do, and then let them see what they can find. Now, what I would like to recommend to you at this point in time is to make sure that you are always cultivating a relationship with recruiters. This is very easy to do, and this is exactly what I've done over the last 10 to 15 years. And and I have more opportunity that I know what to do with. Now, if I run into the situation where a contract ends, employment ends, whatever, I just have to open my email, craft one letter and send it out to a bunch of people. Within hours, I have more opportunities than I know what to do with. And that's not because I've written books or anything else of that nature. It's because the recruiters are currently working with opportunities and I'm reaching out to them and they match us up. What you can do in your email is go in your email and find the canned responses section. Sometimes it's called templates. Sometimes it's called something else. And in there, you're going to want to create a new template. And this template is going to be a reply to this email. And this is a typical email you get from a recruiter. Say, hey, we have an opportunity at XYZ company. You need four years of experience in ABC technology. Does this sound like a good match or something you're interested in? Most of the time, software engineers, developers will get irritated because they're being sold a position or something like that that doesn't fit their skill set. And they'll tell the recruiter to go take a hike or they'll delete the email and not even reply. What I recommend you do, and this is what I do, is reply to every single email. You're going to reply. You're going to go into your canned responses. You're going to have this one saved. And here's what it says. Hello, first name. Thanks for reaching out. I appreciate it. At this time, I'm currently booked up with projects and work. However, that does change every three to six months. So please feel free to reach out around that time and we'll see if there's any opportunity to connect and work together at that time. Best regards, on. Save that as your canned response. Now, anytime a recruiter messages you, you're going to reply with this canned response. That's it. You have to realize that recruiters don't get replies that often. So by you replying, put you at the top of the list and you've told them to follow up. What are they going to do? They're going to put you in their CRM system to remind them in three to six months to reach out. Now you have a constant drip of people that are going to be messaging you. Now in three to six months, you can create another formed response saying the same thing. Hey, thanks for reaching out. Uh, still currently booked up. Why don't you reach out again in another three to six months? That's 
that's it. Now you've got two canned responses. You can reply to these recruiters, you're staying in contact with them, and then you're gonna take that email and you're gonna label it as recruiter and archive it. You don't delete it, you save it, and you label it as recruiter. So if you run into the situation where you were looking for positions, you've been laid off, something like this happens, you now have a plethora of recruiters you can reach out to directly and you can send them that resume that we built in step one. So you send them that resume, here's my experience. You can send them the link to your LinkedIn profile and reach out to them directly. Now we're on to number four, the final one here. This is manual discovery. Manual discovery is you're just gonna go visit the companies that you're interested in and go look for a position. This is what we've all done. You're also gonna go to job boards, various different job boards. You can go to niche job boards. For example, I run androidjobs.io. It's a job board for Android professionals where people go to get hired as an Android engineer and companies post Android jobs. Maybe you're a web developer or an iOS developer or some other type of developer. You can go to those niche job boards or go directly to a company or companies that you're interested in working for. Go to their careers page, see if they have anything and apply directly there. Again, you can use the resume that you built in the resume builder right there in step one. Now, when you're doing this, you have to remember that you've already made yourself available to work on LinkedIn. That's notified recruiters. You've reached out to recruiters and you're doing manual discovery at this point in time. This alone will most likely show you various different opportunities that you can pursue. They may not be exactly the ones that you love to do or want to do, but that's okay. These are things that can kind of get you going and get you out of a bad spot if you need cash flow soon and quickly because of a recent layoff or so forth. So that kind of wraps it up for there. But now I do have five ancillary things you can do to help boost your chances of landing a gig soon and also in the future. And they really have to do around personal branding and marketing. So let's just walk through this real quick. Number one, you want to blog about the technology you're interested in getting into. This could be a how-to article. It could be a something that you realize or an opinion that you have on something or how you can do something that's maybe integrating with another environment. But just write an article about it. Post it on anything. If you don't have a blog, go create one on Medium or any other type of place and just get it out there. Share it on your social media. Number two, you want to create a demo app that you can use to showcase your talents and put it on GitHub. This could be a to-do application that uses dates, times, and logins and so forth and perhaps particular types of design and so forth of that nature. You could publish it if it's a web app, provide links to it when you have it inside of your resume. What this will do is allow potential employers to review your code and say, oh, looks like, all right, I see what this person is doing. Yeah, they're talented. I like that. Okay, yeah, we don't do these things that way here, but oh, I see how they did it. It ups your chances because they can see that you actually know what you're doing. So that's number two. Number three, you want to record a video very much like this one and post it to YouTube demonstrating how to do something in the technology you're working in. This is very similar to the blog. And in fact, you could write a blog on something and then record a video. You have to remember that people consume things differently. Some people love reading blogs. Some people love watching videos, so you have to do it in both sections. For example, this video I also released as a podcast completely differently on my podcast, The Fragmented Podcast. I will also be writing a blog about this because I need to hit the different verticals of people out there that are going to be watching this. Which leads us to number four. You can start a podcast, you can record a podcast with somebody, you can then talk to people who have podcasts and offer to come on and speak about something you know in regards to the technology that you would like to get a job in. This works very well. Now again, you don't have to start a podcast, but it's an option. Get out there and get in front of people and demonstrate your knowledge in something. Most likely someone's going to hear it and perhaps reach out to you. All right, number five, speak at a local user group or meetup or regional conference where you don't have to travel. Why not travel? Because most likely if you travel somewhere and you have to worry about airfare, hotel, things add up. It gets costly. If you've had an employer all of your life, usually your employer will pay for a lot of those things. So you don't have that luxury. What I recommend doing is just speaking at the local groups, these local regional conferences. These are ones that you can drive to four to six hours maximum. In the past, I've even drove four to six hours from Minneapolis when I lived there down to Iowa. I spoke at a code camp, did two presentations in the course of four hours, and then left at 3 p.m. before the conference was over to get back home because I had duties that I had to take care of with my children. But I got in there and I took care of it. This allowed me to get in front of more people to demonstrate my knowledge of what I knew, etc. All of these five tips, blogging, creating a demo app, putting it on GitHub, recording a how-to video, getting on podcasts, and speaking are all going to improve the chances that someone's going to see you and need help. And most likely, you're going to find somebody reaching out saying, hey, we need your exact specialty and you come work with us for a little while. So that kind of wraps it up. Let's just do a quick recap. The four main things you need to do is make sure you have a LinkedIn page, make sure that it's completely filled out and build your resume with Resume Builder. So that's kind of number one of three steps in the number one there. Make sure you build everything out there. Number two, this is really important. Go into LinkedIn's open to work feature. Turn it on. You want to let people know that you're open to work. This will notify all different types of people, recruiters, hiring managers, etc. Number three, you want to directly reach out to recruiters that you know, tell them that you're available and that you're looking for a position. And number four, manual discovery. Go out and start applying for all the different places at various companies and the job boards themselves. Now, I hope you find a job and 
hope you find the one that you're looking for. If you have any questions regarding this or the process or anything of that nature, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks a lot.